Is this working now? Okay, great. All right. Yeah, so as I said, I will be speaking on the topic high integrity urban localization, bringing safety in aviation to autonomous driving. And I'll start by breaking down this title to explain the significance and motivation behind my research. Starting from why do we need to think about safety in autonomous driving? So most of us here are aware of the buzz surrounding autonomous vehicles and the potential they hold for the future of transportation. Uh, autonomous technology, uh, driving technology has been advancing at a tremendous pace, fueled through the combined efforts of both industry and academia. However, it is still important to acknowledge the various incidents that continue to shed light on the safety concerns. For example, just a few months previously, a self-driving vehicle operated by Cruz was involved in a crash in San Francisco. Similarly, Pony AI, another self-driving company, was, uh, involved, was involved in a suspension by the California government uh, following a crash with a road divider. And these challenges are not just uh, associated with full levels of self-driving, even partial levels of autom uh, automation are susceptible to failures. Uh, for instance, drivers relying on the driver assist technology uh, from Tesla were led into crash attenuators. And those relying on ways for navigational instructions uh, during challenging conditions were led into bodies of water. So uh, with, these, with this in mind, these incidents are not just a matter of chance. They're in fact uh, resulting from failures within a complex network of interconnected operations happening inside these vehicles. And uh, these operations include localization, which tells us about where am I, perception, which answers what's around me, prediction, which then anticipates where are they going, planning, which then guides us about where do I go, and control, which focuses on how do I get there. And while all of these operations are important for the final outcome, localization is a core component. And that means that any errors at this stage can propagate and even magnify the errors present in subsequent stages. Therefore, it becomes important to consider a safe localization for ensuring safe autonomous driving. So in the context of safe localization, a natural question to ask is, are we there yet? And uh, unfortunately, the answer to that is no. And a big reason for this is that most of the focus on developing localization systems has been on an accuracy-driven design, which is based on the idea that if we can build really accurate systems, safety would inherently follow. However, what we really need is a safety-driven design, which means that let's figure out what are the core requirements of our system and design for them. Unfortunately, what these requirements should be is also not very clear at the moment with the research and development on the safety requirements still being in its early stages. With this, it becomes difficult to envision how we can go about doing this process of building safe localization systems. Luckily, there is one other domain that we can look to, which has not only been researching on safe localization systems, but has also successfully deployed them. Uh, this is exemplified in aviation by the use of global navigation satellites, or GNSS, which relies on multiple satellites and constellations to provide a global reach and availability. It, is also, uh, it also has enhanced performance through the support of various aiding systems, such as WAS and ESPAS. The second lesson that we can take is to focus on a multifaceted performance criteria that extends beyond accuracy and also includes integrity. Integrity is defined as the measure of trustworthiness in the location output from the system and is connected to various other performance requirements that guarantee its timeliness and consistency. The collection of techniques that are developed for that focus on integrity as a metric in aviation are termed under the umbrella, umbrella term of integrity monitoring. And within the realm of integrity monitoring, there are three main concepts that are important in the context of today's talk. The first is the idea of cross-referencing measurements from multiple satellites to the receiver and doing that to identify and eliminate any faults and thereby enhancing the reliability of the system in a variety of operating conditions. The second concept is that of estimating probabilistic position error bounds, which are also known as protection levels. Uh, these measure the deviation between the true position and an erroneous estimate and serve as a quality metric that goes alongside location. 
The third idea is that of generating alerts whenever the error exceeds a set threshold uh, known as the alert limit. Now, uh, since these uh, integrity monitoring techniques have been widely successful in aviation, it is natural to ask whether these ideas can be adopted for autonomous driving. And it turns out that we need to first address some challenges associated with urban environments first before these techniques can be adopted. So urban localization is different because it relies on several different types of sensors, such as camera, LIDAR, IMU, and GNSS, each of which have their own unique forms of measurements and characteristics. In urban localization, these different measurements are combined together in order to overcome the limitation of each individual sensor. However, this introduces several new challenges, both sensor specific and collective that are different from aviation. The first challenge is that of uh, in GNSS sensor, uh, where while in aviation, it is fairly reliable with rare faults. In urban environments, it suffers from limited measurements and increased faults. And this is because GNSS signals get reflected by the tall structures present in these environments, which can create bias errors or faults. Furthermore, because of these tall structures, the visibility of the sky is limited. And uh, furthermore, this visibility of the satellites is also low, uh, reducing the overall number of measurements that are available to us. The second ch uh, challenge is associated with visual sensors such as camera or LIDAR, which are rarely used in aviation. And these sensors have a more complex error characteristic compared to GNSS. For example, they're susceptible to lighting variations, as well as the presence of moving objects in the environment, whose effect can be difficult to mod model uh, towards the errors. Furthermore, these errors depend on the immediate surroundings of the vehicle, which keep on changing as the vehicle navigates through the environment. The third challenge is associated with considering all these sensors together, which is the challenge of managing a multi-sensor integration. Here, because each sensor has its own characteristics and uncertainty, assessing its collective effect on the localization errors becomes difficult. Furthermore, these errors across sensors can, are also fairly cross-dependent. For example, large moving objects in the environment can both reflect GNSS signals and cause errors in visual sensors. With these challenges in mind, I now present the objective of my thesis, which is to enable high integrity urban localization by bringing in techniques from integrity monitoring in aviation, which are focusing on mitigating faults, estimating error bounds, and generating alerts, and adapting them to the context of urban localization and autonomous driving by addressing the aforementioned challenges. And I have worked towards this objective throughout my graduate school experience uh, across multiple projects that have yielded publications both in journals and in conference venues. Among these publications, seven are particularly relevant in the context of today's talk. These uh, works are focused closely to the challenges of urban environments that I have just discussed before. And they not only highlight my research journey, but also form a framework that guides us for the rest of this talk. So now I'll start with part one, which is about the challenge of limited measurements and increased faults. Here, my work has uh, addressed two main research questions. The first question is, how do we mitigate faults when there are limited GNSS measurements with multiple faults in them? And the second research question is, uh, is how do we generate alerts whenever the localization error exceeds a set limit? In view of time, uh, we, will, we will focus on the first research question for this portion. Uh, so the prior work on fault mitigation is vast, and so it is important to acknowledge it. And here I have categorized it across four different aspects and in three categories. The first category is techniques uh, that, that do residual-based fault mitigation and uh, are commonly used in aviation. While these are not designed to handle limited measurements or multiple faults, uh, they are free of parameter tuning in the sense that they directly derive their uh, characteristics from provided safety requirements and uh, are also very efficient. The second type of work is bank of filters, which use a different kind of filter to handle every different type of fault. These can handle limited measurements as well as multiple faults while being free of parameter tuning, but they're not very scalable because of the requirement of needing a new filter whenever a new type of fault needs to be handled. The third category is M estimation techniques, which are not used a lot in GNSS because they require a large number of measurements to work properly. 
However, they're robust to multiple faults and are also very scalable. So compared to these three categories of works, ours meets all the four aspects. So before I go into what we do in our approach, I'll first explain how residual based fault mitigation, which is commonly used in aviation works, and then build upon it to explain our approach. In residual based fault mitigation, we start with measurements from multiple GNSS satellites. These measurements called pseudo ranges can be thought of as distances in a 4D coordinate space with three dimensions being a spatial denoting position and one time dimension denoting bias errors in the plot. We then identify a coordinate, uh, a point in the coordinate space that is the most consistent with all the measurements. And that is analogous to solving the least squares optimization problem uh, shown on right. The optimization includes residual terms that denote the differences between an estimated and an observed measurement. Now, when a fault is present, uh, residual based fault mitigation methods remove it by identifying the measurement with the largest residual and excluding it from the set and resolving the least squares problem. Now this technique works well in aviation when the faults are few and the measurements are many. However, in the context of urban environments, this faces challenges because multiple faults and limited measurements creates ambiguity, not only uh, in the solution of the optimization problem, but also in correctly identifying the faulty measurements. So we address this challenge by modeling both the coordinate space and the measurements using probability distributions. And uh, for to work with this probability distributions, we design a probabilistic optimization objective that includes unknown measurement weight terms along with terms that have the residual in them. For this uh, optimization objective, uh, we use a particle-based probability distribution to model the coordinate space. And uh, solving this amounts to the fault mitigation strategy of simultaneously downweighting all the measurements that are inconsistent with this particle-based probability distribution. Now, solving this optimization exactly is computationally expensive. And therefore, we design an expectation maximization-based strategy to uh, solve it in alternating steps. In the first step, uh, we keep the measurement weights fixed and only update the coordinate space probability distribution. And in the maximization step, we use a probabilistic version of fault mitigation to only update the measurement weights. Furthermore, we track this probability distribution over time by, using, uh, by representing it, it using its samples or particles. And this tracking is done in three steps. In the prediction step, we use the known models of dynamics of the vehicle to propagate the particles in time. In the optimization step, we do our expectation maximization strategy to update these particles. And finally, in the resampling step, we generate a new set of particles that are more consistent with the updated probability distribution. So now that I've explained our approach, I'll move on to experimental evaluation. And for our experiments, we use the Frankfurt Western Tower data set which is collected in a complex urban environment with up to 32% of measurements, GNSS measurements being faulty. Uh, the region that the data set was collected in can be seen on right. Uh, so it's a fairly complicated region with several tall buildings. The state that we track here uh, includes the position, heading, as well as clock bias. And we use two baselines to compare against our method. Uh, one being a bank of filters method that uses 45 particle filters and is known as Bayesian ring. And the second being a residual based fault mitigation method known as RAIM that is combined with a Kalman filter for position tracking. So here are our uh, trajectories estimated from each of uh, our approaches and the baselines on the data set. Uh, we use thousand particles for the particle filter based methods, which is our approach and Bayesian RAIM. Uh, for the more for quantitative evaluation, we use the metric of root mean squared error as can be seen, our approach demonstrates lower errors in terms of RMSE and visually compared to the baselines. We also analyze the computational uh, requirements from our approach and the baselines. And uh, we can see that our approach takes less than 10 milliseconds per iteration to run, which is faster than the measurement rate of most commercially available GNSS sensors. And this is in contrast to the bank of filters based methods like Bayesian RAIM which scale as the number of faults uh, increase that need to be considered. And so our approach achieves real-time performance in scenarios which have multiple measurement errors. With this, I come to the summary of part one. We 
we developed a particle filter based probabilistic framework that can simultaneously estimate the location as well as mitigate false presented measurements. We address the challenges of limited measurements as well as increased faults in urban environments compared to aviation. And uh, using experiments on real world data, we showed improvement both in the localization performance compared to the residual based and filter based methods and uh, improvements in computational performance compared to the bank of filters methods. So now I will move to part two, which is about the challenge of complexity in sensor error characteristics. And in this part, the research question that we address is how can we estimate protection levels for image-based localization? And before I go into details of what we do, let's first look at how image-based localization works. We start with a camera image and to localize it, it is matched with a map of the environment. Now this map can assume multiple forms, for example, key points and descriptors, point clouds, or a 3D city model. Going from left to right increase, increases the visual detail of the map and going from right to left uh, increases the memory efficiency. For this part, we focus on point clouds. Uh, okay. For this part, we focus on uh, point clouds, which strike a balance between the visual detail and the memory efficiency requirement. So to localize with a large scale map, such as a point cloud, a common approach is to consider a small section within it known as the local map and match this local map with the camera image for the localization purposes. Since this uh, process is uh, quite complex, uh, many recent approaches have proposed using deep neural networks or DNN for matching these uh, local maps and camera images by estimating a relative pose between them. However, this introduces a challenge in terms of estimating protection levels, which we require. That is that this requires characterizing the uncertainty associated with this DNN based pose estimation. And there has been prior work on characterizing uncertainty with DNNs. One category of works focuses on aleatoric uncertainty, which measures the, which is a data driven measure of uncertainty based on the training data. For example, in the picture on right, aleatoric uncertainty is high in regions where the training data shows that it has high uncertainty and it is low in the, uh, where the training data reflects that as well. The second category of works focus on capturing the epistemic uncertainty, which also captures the uncertainty across different models. So going back to the figure on right, we have high epistemic uncertainty in regions where multiple models fit over the same data are inconsistent, showing that there is an inherent uncertainty within the modeling process. There, there is also a third category of works which I have included here, which is methods for text test time data augmentation that are not commonly used for uncertainty quantification, but are most similar to our work. These methods use multiple evaluations on slightly different inputs from the same neural network and compare the outputs to assess its robustness. Uh, and uh, these type of methods have low reliance on the training data because they use if I inputs just that are determined at the runtime. So compared to these methods, our approach meets again, all these three aspects. So to understand our approach for characterizing uncertainty, uh, I will use the following example. Uh, starting from a camera image, we can match it with a local map to estimate a location using a neural network. However, if we consider a slightly shifted version of this local map, which in this case is visually similar to the original one, you would arrive at a different location from the previous one that is inconsistent uh, with the previous location. However, to characterize uncertainty in this situation, we can geometrically propagate this new location to the original coordinate frame and look at all of these different locations together uh, to characterize the overall uncertainty. So now we can apply this idea for estimating protection levels in our approach where instead of a single estimated location, we consider a probability distribution that is modeled as the aleatoric uncertainty via a deep neural network. The multiple local maps that we consider are randomly generated by perturbing the original local map. So they consider the region around it. And we propagate and combine the uncertainty from all these different perturbed local maps to characterize our overall uncertainty. From this overall uncertainty, we estimate the protection levels as confidence intervals of the probability distribution that can be seen from the expression on right that includes terms uh, from the propagated 
error uh, for each perturbation, outlier weights, as well as a user-specified confidence level. So now that I have gone over our approach, I will move to experimental setup. And for evaluating this, we use the Kitty Visual Odometry dataset. That is a popular dataset in the computer vision applications. And it captures urban roads as well as dynamic scenes, as can be seen from a few example images on right. We also show a point cloud uh, map of the environment that we construct using LIDAR measurements from the dataset. For our protection levels, we use a confidence level of 99% and randomly initialize the original local maps within five meters of the ground truth. Uh, for evaluating our protection levels, we use 64 perturbations that are uh, evaluated in a single batch pass of the neural network for computational efficiency. So first, I'll talk about the horizontal protection level performance, where we estimate uh, protection levels both along the lateral direction and the longitudinal direction of the vehicle's motion, and show them for two subsections of the overall dataset trajectory. As can be seen, the horizontal protection levels from our approach are able to enclose a large number of position errors, particularly 99% of the position errors that matches our confidence level requirements. And a similar result can be seen along the vertical direction as well, where the vertical protection levels computed from our approach are able to overbound 19, more than 99% of the position errors and that too with a small bound gap. So with that, I reach summary of part two, which is that we developed a strategy for estimating image-based protection levels by making use of multiple evaluations from a deep neural network. We demonstrated the effectiveness of this method through experiments on real world data in an urban environment and uh, showed that the estimated protection levels are able to enclose 99% of the errors along the lateral, longitudinal, and vertical directions. Now with that, I would move to part three, which is about the challenge of managing a multi-sensor integration. And for this part, the research question that we focus on is, how can we both achieve high accuracy while bounding position errors for multi-sensor uh, state estimation? And again, there has been a lot of prior work on doing accurate multi-sensor state estimation. Uh, and I have divided that in three categories. The first category includes robust extended Kalman filters or REKFs that are used across a variety of fields. With the right models, these methods are fairly robust to outliers in the measurements and are also very computationally efficient. The second category of works is raw blackpillized particle filters or RBPFs that uh, are robust to modeling errors and can also capture a more complex uncertainty, particularly a multimodal uncertainty. However, they're not very computationally efficient because they require a large number of particles to appropriately capture the uncertainty. The third category that we compare here is factor graph optimization techniques, which are robust to both outliers and modeling errors. However, very few of them uh, capture uncertainty by modeling it explicitly, and they're also not very computationally efficient. Compared to these methods, ours meets all the four aspects. And when we talk about multi-sensor state estimation, it is also important to talk about the sensors and measurements that we're considering. So for our work, we consider three different sensors. One is the global navigation satellite system for which we use two different constellations, GPS and Beidou. And we use the measurements collected at both the receiver end and at a nearby base station from which we construct double different pseudo range measurements that remove most common errors. The second sensor we use is a monocular camera that captures an image at each time instant. We use deep neural networks to process these images uh, to both estimate the depth as well as identify important landmarks that are used to assess the vehicle's motion. We output both these landmarks as well as the body velocity from this assessed motion. The third sensor is the attitude and heading reference system that measures the vehicle's orientation in terms of its yaw, roll pitch and yaw angles and outputs both this orientation and an angular velocity. So now I'll move to explaining first how state and uncertainty estimation works in a robust extended Kalman filter before moving on to uh, talk about how we build upon it. So a common situation that arises in uh, urban environments with multi-sensor setups 
is that there is a discrepancy between the measurements and the tracked probability distribution. In these situations, uh, an RDKF starts with provided complex models of the dynamics, measurements, and outliers. And these are complex because they can be nonlinear, have non Gaussian errors, and in general be intractable and approximates them to simpler linear Gaussian and tractable models. Then it efficiently updates the probability distribution using least squares optimization. This approximation is enabled by the use of a linearization point that is selected as the mean of the original probability distribution. However, a challenge with this strategy is that uh, it has poor performance in terms of uncertainty modeling. For example, in the considered case, the second sensor measurement it's assigned a low probability under the new distribution. So to improve the performance of these filters under several situations, our approach, instead of considering a single linearization point, considers multiple linearization points and tracks them effectively. These linearization points are associated with different approximate models of the original complex models, and therefore lead to different probability distributions together which characterize the overall uncertainty. Furthermore, we can do both these processes of uh, approximation and optimization uh, in, in a parallel manner, and therefore being efficient and not adding a significant computational overhead over using a single linearization point. So now, uh, to effectively select these linearization points over time, we model them using a particle-based probability distribution and track these particles using a particle filter. This particle filter is coupled with our original parallel REKF that is doing state estimation. And the overall probability distribution across this particle filter and the REKF is modeled effectively using Rao Blackwellization, which is the expression shown on right and contains terms from both the filters. So now that, that have, I have explained our approach for characterizing this uncertainty in challenging environments, I'll move to experimental setup. Uh, and we use the urban nav data set that is collected in a dense urban region from Hong Kong uh, for an our analysis. And this data set has measurements from multiple sensors and uh, contains several dynamic scenes and situations where sensors have faults. The data set trajectories and the different regions in it can be seen on right, where there is a region with medium height buildings, with one-sided buildings and a wide street, each of which have a different effect on the sensor error characteristics. We track a state consist, uh, comprising of position, velocity, orientation, and angular velocity bias, out of which position is considered within the linearization points. For our baselines, we consider our EKF, which is the method that we built upon, and uh, the naive RBPF, with, uh, which uses the same number of particles as our approach. And so here are the trajectories that are estimated both from our approach and the baselines. We use just 20 particles in the particle filter-based approaches, uh, which, is, which are our uh, approaches and uh, the naive RBPF. And also evaluate the root mean squared error uh, for quantifying the uh, performance. As can be seen, our approach demonstrates competitive or improved localization performance compared to the baselines. Now, we also ev evaluate the position error bounding performance of these approaches based on the uncertainty. And for this, we compared, compare against our EKF, which is the other similarly performing uh, approach in terms of localization. Uh, these, so we visualize the uh, plots of position error versus the bounds that are estimated from our method and visualize them for a region with medium height buildings, which is an especially challenging region for each of the algorithms. Uh, we evaluate them based on failure rate, which is the fraction of time when the actual error exceeds the bound that we have estimated, denoting a failure in the bounding process. And that is, that is the region in red uh, shown in the plots. We evaluate all the bounds with a confidence level of 95%. And by looking at the bounds, both in uh, lateral and the longitudinal directions, uh, we can see that our approach exhibits fewer bounding failures compared to our EKF. Nevertheless, it is important to note that for the confidence level that we set, the empirically observed performance in terms of failures is higher than we expect. Now, this is a problem in calibration of our uh, confidence levels and the estimated performance, and is a potential avenue that can be addressed in future work. And so here is a summary of part three. 
we developed a raw blackfellized filtering framework for characterizing multimodal uncertainty by making use of linearization points within a multi-sensor state estimation framework. Uh, and we use the uncertainty that we characterize to estimate position error bounds and uh, showed through comparisons with baselines on real world data that we can uh, observe competitive or improved localization performance, as well as improved uncertainty estimation performance with fewer bounding failures. And so here is a summary of all our contributions from this thesis. We developed a particle filter based probabilistic framework that addresses limited measurements and increased faults in urban environments. We also developed a multiple DNN evaluation based strategy for estimating protection levels using camera images and a provided environment map. And we developed a raw blackwellized filtering framework that uses multiple linearization points for estimating position error bounds in multi sensor localization. And there are many avenues for future work, uh, but there are two of them which I thought are uh, particularly interesting. And one is that of calibrating error bounds. As we saw previously, one of the challenges uh, that we have in urban environments is that for the confidence levels that we set, we want the actual empirical performance of the uh, estimated bounds to be consistent with these levels. And uh, that is an avenue for future work that uh, can tap into the several techniques that are being researched upon uh, concurrently. The other avenue is that of incorporating additional sources of information, particularly road networks that are another useful information source for urban environments. However, incorporating them in localization pipelines requires accounting for the uncertainty in these road networks, as well as their validity, because these networks might not always be up to date. 